You know I try to be a good man I always give it my best But truth be told, someday I want to go to the wild, wild way And now, live from our Smokehouse studio, it's time for Real Estate Jerky. All your real estate questions answered by our provocatively lean expert host, Edward Ed Parco, MBA veteran and president of Lending for Living, and the refreshingly wise realtor, Aaron Custer, specializing in residential, commercial, and ag real estate at PMZ Real Estate. Mortgage and real estate wisdom, stretching over 50 years. Plenty to chew on, starting now. Good afternoon. It's great to be here with you and with my co-host Aaron Custer. Uh, today we're talking, you know, about student loan debt, with how it's really become a huge thing lately with kids going to school and paying for stuff. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later, and we're going to go through the history of student loans. As of last year, 69% of college students have student loans. The average student loan is about twenty, let's just say thirty thousand dollars. And you know, Aaron and I focus on this because can you know young adults today with student loan debt be able to buy a home or will they have to wait till the future and that's a huge thing i've seen a lot of articles about it so i thought it'd be a good thing we should talk about this week what do you think aaron i think it's great and it's a big question in my mind so let's talk about it well because there's been some changes and we'll get into that about different loan programs whether they allow you to defer them and then you don't have to qualify with them and we'll get into that later but let's talk about the best thing that happened to you this week so um you know, we had a lot of uh, weather this weekend, and um, I had to drive south to do a listing. So I made a road trip with my husband. It was amazing. And we went uh, down the five, and the rain was pouring. I must have seen 30 rainbows. Uh, the mountains are covered with clover. At one point, we were in a cloud, and it was snowing, and we were in the pass. And it was really you must a wonderful on the grapevine. Day. I was. I was. I had to go. I did a listing down in, in SoCal. And so anyway, the best thing that happened to me was a quiet time with my husband, being able to just talk to him and have this amazing, beautiful scenery the whole time that we were traveling. Really? Yes. Oh, sounds great. like a good time. It was a great time. On top of business and all the things that closed and all the business we did, that's really good. But that was really good, too. How about you? What's the best thing that happened to you? Know, to you? It's, every week, you know, usually something pops right off the top of my head. This week, it's been kind of a quieter week. Um, I actually would say what I'll talk about later is, um, I hate to say this, but what the Fed came back and said, you know, how they're not going to go forward and raise rates. They're going to potentially uh, ease here forward. I'll get more into that in my, my minute that you give me for my market stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, that's important because that's, you know, that's huge for our industry that, if, you know, what's happening with interest rates, what's happening with a few other things that drives the market so i truly don't know one lender or one realtor that goes yay when they raise rates it's always a big burden for us because now if we have deals in contract or things working and we're having to readjust if things aren't locked and it's just a mess right. it hurts us true and i mean you know I, I was trying to think of an analogy how to look at it and basically what the fed does is it's like you're trying to strike a match and mm -hmm. before it lights the economy is the actual lit of the uh, of the match they try to blow it out just enough so it doesn't light too fast and go forward and the problem is they blow too hard and, they, and then they go too they ease too much you know what i mean if they ease too much then we get inflation if they don't if they go too fast and hard then we go into recession right away. So it's a really hard for them to figure that out. I know, but I'm just of the of the mind thinking that everyone should own a house. And so however we can make it easier for them to do that, right. until everybody isn't owning a house and you know purchasing a house with a good interest rate, it just feels funny to me when they raise rates at all. Yeah, it but they have to. It, I know. Yeah, but you, I know. you don't want, to, you don't want the 1970s with the inflation that we went through and then, then in the 80s right. with the 21% interest rates if we don't stay on top of it. We don't want to be Venezuela, right? I don't want with to do that. a million that. three something interest rate. I just think they should pick our county here, our Central our Valley, and rate, say, that we get we get a right we get a pass. <laughs> okay, we get a pass. <laughs> but I mean, you have to remember when people are buying homes, it's over time. So I mean, yeah. if it's it's going to happen for people, and you got to get in. And one of the things they're talking about is the home ownership rate right now is at the lowest it's ever been in the fifties because of I'm not like talking nineteen fifties, but fifty percent because there's just not a lot of houses out there for people to purchase. Correct. And so why don't you talk to us about your listings now? Okay, um, I'm a little bit pretty excited because it looks like um, in Stanislaus County where there's 894 residential properties available right now pending are 433 so they have ticked up uh, quite a bit there's How many is available I'm sorry 894 so half of them are are in right. 
are in contract. Of the 1136 in San Joaquin County, there's 566 pending. So those are people that are in contract right now, and that's quite a lot more than what we've been looking at on sold properties. Right. I think last week or the week before, it was only 300 pending. We were talking about sold. I'm just bringing in pending right now to show that the market has jumped up a little bit where everybody's busy right now. So that's good for us. Yes. We just need more people to list their houses so that we can get our buyers into those houses. You know, I think when they see signs go up around in their neighborhood, it does move people off the shelf a little bit. I think that happens. Yeah. Yeah. I still, and I read and actually was watching on TV also that they're talking about the wealth effect. I think I brought it up last week about, you know, the stock market took such a hit during December that a lot of people didn't want to go out and because they didn't have that money that they they lost in the stock market so they didn't want to go out and buy a house yeah well they're over it because we're busy (laughs) Um, i wanted to show you about some of our listings real fast go ahead i'm sorry to interrupt no you didn't um right now this week i'm loving stockton in stockton on euclid we've got um a home for 374 it's a little bit more it's a four bedroom three bathroom house but um, that's a gorgeous, gorgeous property in Stockton. And I frankly have been showing a lot of homes there for around the 200 range. And, and the, there's a lot of beautiful communities in Stockton. On Middlefield in Stockton, there's a home for 379 And it's a four-bedroom, three-bathroom. On Benjamin Holt, there's a home for 370 And that's a three-bedroom, two-bathroom. That's available right now. Beautiful homes. Here's one for 419 in Stockton on Bonnie Brook. So that's a 3 3. And um, so I'm liking Stockton this week. Also on Rollingwood in Salida, we talked about that a little bit last week. It's 290. It's still out there for a 3 2 bedroom. We've got uh, Valley Terrace Way in Salida at 299. And that's a 3 2 as well. And then uh, Parks Avenue in Salida is 292 5. And it is a 3 2. In Oakdale, we have a property that popped up. It's uh, D Street in Oakdale. And that's at 389, and it's a three bedroom, two bathroom, a beautiful home, a single family home that's a good starter home. And then, of course, J Street is still there at 285 for a 3 2. And then um, in Oakdale on Fair Oaks at 299. Um, in Modesto, there is a property in Huntington Drive that's 265, and it's a three bedroom, two bath, ready to go. Also in Modesto on Rybier, there's a 274.9, and it's a 3 2. And then on Gold Dust in Modesto is 284, and it is a 3-2. I wanted to give you a feature of my Glen Abbey in uh, Manteca. It's a $650,000 home. It's a five bedrooms, five bathrooms, and completely beautiful and with all the amenities with a gourmet kitchen. And if you're interested, please give me a call. And that's what I wanted to feature this week. What, wow. do, you, what do you have going on your... On oh, my, my interest rates? Yes. Basically, you know, this week the Fed came out and they, with their minutes, they talked about basically they're going to be patient and flexible policy approach going forward. Um, the growth risk has been prom- has prompted the actual fact that there isn't much growth right now, and so they've prompted not they're going to pause on rates. Uh, inflation's muted, tighter markets. They ex- they actually expect slower growth in 2019. Which, you know, this is all relative because they could all change in a month from now. You know, we start seeing a hot summer because I've been reading a lot of other stuff that they're going to have a early spring market instead of a late, you know, so that means we're going to start seeing stuff happening in March and April versus May, June, July. Well, haven't you seen that every single week things are changing exponentially? Oh, yeah, totally. Um, and then one of the other things is the National Association of Home Builders released their housing market index and it actually was up um to 62 from four points from the month before 459, which means that they're actually starting to see that they're going to sell more homes and they're going to start building more homes if they are available for them to build, you know, if they have the lots. But mm-hmm. basically, they're seeing a huge change in the sediment that they've seen before. Well, in that's Manteca, good. we have 2,700 homes coming in. When are they coming in? They're all being approved and built right now. Wow. They're all in the marks. And the other thing was, you know, with the slower down that we've seen, we've seen the lowering of interest rates. Um, they've seen a huge tick up in mortgage applications this last week. Um, and purchases were up 1.7%. And they're now up, you know, from t- that's two and a half times higher than they were last year at this time. Or percent higher than they were last year. I know, it's crazy. Time. We were talking into the evening. I remember one time you, said, you even said to me, it's Sunday, Aaron. You know, take a breath. So. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's Sunday on a holiday weekend uh, at eight o'clock at night. Yeah, but bother me. me. <laughs> yeah. Go back to your driving down there to Oxnard. Yeah. <laughs> so that's basically what we're looking at the market. So basically, it's a great time to purchase, as we're talking about. It's a great time if you yeah. want to refinance, take some cash out to pay off some stuff. 
So yeah, yeah, it's a great time in the valley to move forward on that. So I'm excited about that too. Also, um, what I've seen is we're having a lot more professionals come in and get and their hands involved into the purchase process. It's not any more of where you just take an application, find a house, send it over to your lender. Now you're bringing in contractors and all kinds of people to help you along with the purchase price with the purchase pro, uh, program. So I think it's really neat that everybody's hands are in the fire right now, and I'm liking that a lot. How about you? Are you noticing a lot more interaction? I ju- you know, I just see like w- us bringing in people here that we've been talking to, how we, we're getting more involved with more and more professionals as you're talking about. So I, for me, I just, I meet, I'm meeting with so many people who want to purchase. It's just, you know, it's amazing that they want to pr- purchase, uh, you know. And I'm glad they're trusting you. And thanks for all the all the business that you've been taking care of for me this week, too. Oh, yeah, thank it's been you. great. So I think it's time for us to take a break. So, hey, we'll be right back after this break, and we'll be digging into the truth about student loan debt and how it affects the ability to purchase home. We'll also be taking your calls. We've made calling so easy. At, you just hit dial on your, from your mobile phone at pound 250, say the keyword real estate jerky, and you'll be connected. And that's, you know, pound 250, say the phrase real estate jerky, and you're in. If you're calling from a landline, it's 209-551-3483, and you can also message us privately on Facebook or send us a tweet or an email at real estate jerky. And you're going to add radio at Real Estate Jerky, and we'll be back after this break. Thank you. Not having any music during the segment was kind of weird, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's and how it works. I, and I, I also like forgot to start my timer. So, so I was kind of lost. Do you start it? Just so I know on these when we're in leads. And where I'm at, because the timer's not on those right now. And then um, the other thing, it's nice that we don't have a bunch of people in here. It's kind of fun. It's quieter. Yeah. yeah How yeah. it used to be. Yeah. No, although I love when people come, I just think it's more. So when we come back, we'll get right break. into the student loan stuff. Okay. So how are we going to do that? Do you want me to read off some of the stats? Well, I'll bring it back in. And then I'll say, hey, let's get into the student loan debt. And you want to talk about the history? Stuff. And you can give us the history. And then okay. we'll talk about current what's going on that I see. Yeah, and then I'll bring you back to that Pell Grant thing because I think that's amazing how you do your well, taxes. And yeah, all don't that. forget, so we fun. only have like three segments left. <laughs> it's going to go fast. Yeah. Starting, I would go ahead. I need to stop saying amazing. I use that word too much. Huh? I have to find another word besides amazing. <laughs> Say it way too much. Remember, we don't start until you hear the music. No. Huh? We're not going to even start until they hear the play the music. So. I know. What are they doing up there playing? <coughs> you know, I try to be a good man. I always give it my best. But truth be told, someday I want to go. Real Estate Jerky is back on Power Talk 1360. Chew on that. Hey, we're back, and it's we're getting to the lowdown and nitty gritty of the student loan debt out there. So, how did student loans get started? Well, we can thank Harvard University in the mid 1800s. I guess you got the history of all this, don't you, Aaron? You want to get into that? I for do. Us? So, I'll give you a brief history of the student loans in the U.S. Uh, 200 years ago, the USA had no student loan debt, and they were either public or private. If a student wanted to borrow money to attend university, they borrowed from their friends or the family. Would they have to borrow a dollar? For the tuition? Yeah, for the books. And <laughs> yeah. it was like $2 for tuition. <laughs> Food was free. <laughs> the first student loans were offered to students attending Harvard University in the mid-1800s. It was offered directly by the university for about 50 years before the U.S. Department of Education existed. And more than 100 years before NDEA, National Defense Education Act of 1958, would exist. The advent of Harvard's program prompted other universities to begin their own loans. And the first U.S. federal government loans began with veterans and eventually to all citizens. In 1944, the GI Bill passed, allowing veterans to attend college for free. 
1958, federal student loans, first to veterans and then to citizens. In 2009 to 10, U.S. government began uh, loaning students directly rather than giving the money directly to the universities on behalf of the students. And that's when the amount of debt really took off and nearly doubling since 2010. Wow. That's so, a lot of debt. I know. So I want to ask you, how does the student loan debt affect the ability to purchase a home? It's like any other debt on the payments. You have to include them into your debt to income ratio. So basically, you know, so if somebody has, well, just an example, somebody, um, I, I'm on a lot of different groups and where somebody was asking what to help, how to help this person. They had $548,000 in student loan debt and they were making, and their job is $78,000 a year. So with that, basically one of the biggest problems is if it's going off the normal payment it's supposed to be, that's a 2400 a month, a $3,000 student loan debt. However, I guess with the new student loans, you actually, it's adjusted by your income. So the payment amount goes down and that's what we would base everything off of to qualify. Well, how many times have you done a loan where you heard them say, oh, it's deferred, it doesn't count? And that's, and it used to be fine because back, uh, let's see, uh, FHA and conventional would allow you to defer it um, the month that you fund in for 12 months and then you wouldn't have to use the debt against you right? right there's only va allows that to happen now so only veterans get that and most veterans don't have oh i guess you're chris they're going on there that's thanks aaron no you didn't how can you turn it off with the rings going oh because i just turned on the sound but <laughs> start I calling you off. chris tucker yeah i know sorry okay go are you good now i'm good i guess they can bleep that out with everything else right yeah they can all your cussing that you do i don't cuss okay all right. Sure. Should I ask your husband? Yeah, okay. I do. All right, let's go back to student loan debt. So basically, what I'm thinking is it's really, I mean, I was talking to somebody else about this, and I'm going to jump into a different, I wanted to bring it in later, but about how student loan debt, if you're going to get debt for your kids, maybe you start looking at your tax situation where basically you don't include them as you're dependent on your tax return the last two years of high school, right? I was talking about this during the break. Yes. Basically... Then what happens in, and they have a job, say they're working at some grocery store or whatever, they're making, you know, 7,500 for the year or you know, 11,000, whatever. Then they would use that income of your child, not your income. And then they wouldn't qualify for Pell Grants and Cal Grants and all the other well, grants. Well, then the child there. files his own taxes, Correct. right? Correct. They would have the to do that. The last two years right. of high school, right? Yeah. So it would be a junior and senior. So, so then what do they qualify for? And then they would, because they're on their own. So they, they're making nothing. So they would be, you should be able to qualify. What I would tell you is talk to your tax advisor and before you do it. I just know with the new rules, uh, your child has to be, you're only 17 years old is the last time you can actually claim them on your tax return these days. Oh, okay. So that's huge. Well, I mean, it used to be until they get out of your house or they're no longer dependent. Well, you still have dependents. So what is it, what kind of credit do you get on a child dependent if you claim them on your taxes? I think right now now you get a two thousand dollar tax cre uh, tax credit for your child. So then, how does that relate to them if they go out and file their own taxes, pay their taxes? The parent loses that credit. Then what, why is that good for them? Because they're not a dependent underneath somebody else's tax return. They're on their own. They're standing on their own feet. I remember when I tried to right before I got in the service, I applied for Pell Grant and Cal Grant, and I didn't get them because my mom made back in the day, which was hardly anything, $35,000 a year, right? I get in the Navy. Back in that day, it was a lot. Yo, I get in the Navy, I qualify for a Cal Grant and student loan. I mean, Cal Grant and Pell Grant. So I could actually get the Cal Grant for So you're saying like jumpstart that. And so just give up the 2000 each year that you would get for the last two years and then let the child be able to go get his student loans. That's far more. Well, I'm not student far loans. Less. I'm talking to be able to go out for grants because you have yeah. no other, you don't have no parent income. You have been on your own for two years while you, and then you apply for school. But that's far less expensive because they do end up going back to mommy and daddy usually. I know. Yeah, but so, I mean, basically, so I think my daughter, you know, we couldn't have her on this year. And instead of being independent, she got all the money back that she had instead of getting no money back. Like she got 400 bucks back versus zero. She was a dependent underneath us. Sure. But we don't get to use her because she's over the age of 17 now. Oh, okay. That sounds so good. I'm really excited I would just to hear have, that. I would just tell people, you know, go talk to your tax person, go talk, see if that will work for you, if that would help you, and then talk to your people who help you get the, you know, it, grants is, and stuff. Is there a situation where you can do a loan where you can absorb some of that um, debt? Only a refinance. So they, uh, under, you can actually refinance your house and take cash to pay off. Well, I mean, if you're talking student loan debt after, I'm talking, thinking yes. after they've already got the student loan. So you have your own personal student loans and you have $30,000 and you want to get rid of them because they keep going. You can do a cash out refinance, 
ca- conventional or even FHA, and it doesn't affect. It's not considered cash out because you're paying off your student loans. Are the student li- uh, loans uh, normally a higher interest rate than a, a mortgage? Not necessarily. It just depends on when you got them and if you ever refinance them to a lower rate. So you okay. have to. Everybody's situation is different. Okay. So it's well. just whenever you take them out, you know, take them out. Um, do you want me to give some of the um, averages that are out there? Sure. Why don't do you we do have that? time? We've got okay. plenty of time. The average student loan debt, according to the Student Loan Hero, is 69% of college students in 2018 have student loans. Uh, 29800 average amount of debt per student, including both private and federal debt. 14% of parents took out an average of 35600 one million five hundred. Oh, I'm sorry. One point five six trillion in local U.S. student debt loan now. And by the way, that's five times the amount of the consumer car- credit card debt. A forty-four point seven million Americans with student loan debt are current, currently in that debt. And eleven point five percent of student loans are ninety days or more delinquent. Average monthly student loan payment is three ninety-three, and the median uh, monthly student loan payment is two twenty-two. And that's not so bad. I mean, it's less than a small car, but you know, for some people, if you had everything else, you know, you could actually go in if you don't make enough. You know, say you make forty thousand dollars a year, you can have it adjusted to what your income is, right? Yes. And that's what you should do while you're trying to, you know, because just the person I was telling you about, it's like five hundred. There was another guy who said on the same thing. You know, I thought I was bad. I had somebody with two hundred forty-eight thousand dollars in student loan debt, and they're making forty-eight grand a year. Right, so basically, those payments are going to be based off of your income, not based off of what you have to pay. That back. makes more more sense. To However, me. what it does then is it extends the payout period and how much your debt you're getting. Well, the debt by degree in 2012, about 40 percent of all student debt was used to finance graduate and professional degrees. So, an MBA is uh, the average debt is 42,000. A master of education is 50. A uh, master of science is 50. Um, they're talking about a master of arts is 58. A law degree is uh, 140,000. Medicine and health science is 161. And other master's degrees are 55. So, so that's, that's how much it costs to get those degrees? Yeah, but you know, it's so weird because I've heard people that are going to graduate degrees and it's like 50,000 a semester. Have you heard that? I, no, I haven't. Yeah, heard and that. some of the bigger colleges, 50,000 a semester. So um, how's our time? Because I have tons more stats. I got two more minutes before break. Okay. Um, the, the question is, are the average degrees in debt worth it? The average income by degree is less than if you have less than a high school diploma is twenty five thousand six hundred and thirty six. With that's, a, that's how much you can make a year. That's the average. The high school diploma um, student makes thirty five thousand two hundred fifty six, and some college no degree is thirty eight thousand three seventy six. They should go in the construction field or trucking. They make a lot more than that. Yes, uh, associate's degree. That's two years, right? Forty one yep. four ninety six. A bachelor's degree fifty nine thousand one twenty four. A master's degree is 69732 A doctorate degree is 84396 And a professional degree is 89960 So blue-collar certificate license um, income average examples are welders, 57000 Truck drivers, hazmat and long haul, 73000 Elevator installers, 73000 Electricians uh, that do repair and installation, 65000 Petroleum pump system operators, 60,000. Aircraft mechanics, 54,000. Locomotive engineers, 52,000. Telecommunication repair, 53,000. And plumbers and pipe fitters, 51,000. So let's leave it there and we'll come back and we'll pick it up and we'll talk about more of those things. Okay. So let's go out to break. Uh, hey, we like honoring our local veterans. Do you know a business owner who is a veteran of the armed forces? Please get in touch with us. Last week's guest it was Kyle Helton. He was here with his brother, Lyle Helton. And that there, he was a U.S. Air Force Reserve and the owners of Drain Master Plumbing, which we called them the Wonder Twins, right? The Plumbing Twins. Kyle and Lyle. That's right. And don't go away. We'll be right back. And we're taking your calls here live at Real Estate Jerky at dial pound 250 from your cell. Say the keywords Real Estate Jerky or from your landline at 209-551-3483. We'll talk to you when we get back. All right. We're not having as much fun as we Really? Okay, let's bring it back up. Stop reading. When you have that stuff, just, and um, this is going to be on tape, just just like quickly glance at it and say, hey, did you know high school diploma? It's only $35,000. Some colleges. 
38 grand. I don't know. I guess I fell behind eight ball because I just wasn't, didn't feel ready for the show. Why? I don't know. Well, get ready. It's too late. We're halfway through it. And you're, you're bringing us back in, so you better be ready. <laughs> Come on, you're bringing us back in. Aaron. What are we going to talk about? We're going to just talk, keep talking about student loan or anything else you want to talk about. Yeah, I have no problem. <laughs> See, I have a thing about house buying power, right, from student loan debt. I'll talk about that when we get back. Remember, you're bringing us in. We have 12 minutes of segment. on Power Talk 1360. Chew on that. Hi, we're back talking about student loan debt and more precisely, how you can purchase a home and get on the road to uh, building your personal wealth, retiring the student loan debt. Call us with your questions. It's super easy. Dial 250 and use the key phrase, real estate jerky. By the way, that's pound 250 and it works 24 seven. And we love it. And you can also reach out to us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or email us at radio at realestatejerky.com. So let's talk about the student loan debt. Because right now, up to now, it just seems like a big burden. So there are some ways out of it, right? Yeah, there is. But I mean, you can't talk about just a burden of it because, you know, I got another article that was talking about, you know, if you don't have a high school education, the average home purchase price you can buy is $127,000. When you have a high school, that was no high school education. With high school education, you get $194,000. Bachelor's degree, you get $346,000. And graduate level to PhD, $423,000. Well, I even had a client that thought that they had just graduated, so they couldn't, um, and they had gone into the business that they went to school for, right. and they thought they had to wait two years to be able to apply for a home, and it wasn't true. They That's were able to get into one right away. Yeah. After college, and, if it's a specialty, you know, like nursing or a doctor, what were they doing? Uh, it was a nurse, yeah. but explain that. So basically, we would use the fact that you just got out of school, and nursing, you know, is one of those unique situations where when you start, you start with a high salary. You know, most of them start with 80000 plus a year. I know, so especially in here, California, because not every state's the same way. And even... I was, when I was doing loans, um, if you were a nurse, you could not be actually working right then and still qualify for the loan. It was the only job that you could have where you were, you could say, well, I was off for a while and they would still lend to you because they knew you could get a job anytime, anyplace, anywhere. It's the same thing about anything. We just have to show what you've done for the last two years. So if you were in school, we show that you were in school. Well, then higher education does result in higher incomes, which insult, results in higher buying power. Right. So basically what we'd say is plan, you know, plan your future or you help your kid. You know, not everybody knows what they're doing. You know, some people are on a five-year or six-year plan for their bachelor's, right? Right. So. And the other thing that we were talking about on the break that I thought was interesting, you were talking about it, was how many programs there are that help you forgive that debt. Um, for different types of jobs that you would take where you are located. Do, do you want to expand on that? Yeah, they have, um, let's see, it's, um, government offers, a, you know, like four different types of replacement plans. Income-based repayment, which means goes off the income I keep talking about. Um, pay as you earn, and then revised pay as you earn. These are all things you can find out online um, through Local Hero. Um, but one of the biggest things is there's programs out there that if you're a nurse or a doctor or some other specialties, if you're in a like a hospital that's in a low income area or especially in inner area, city. city, yes, you actually after so long they they will uh, help you get rid of your student loans. The other one is I heard that uh, teachers if in California. If yes. you're a science or a math teacher in California, after five years, they'll help you get rid of your student loans. You have to apply for that. And I didn't know about that until I was talking to somebody else today. I actually did a loan for a girl that did that program. And she actually, her student loan was uh, quite large. And they gave her forgiveness because she worked at an inner city school. And she applied for it. And they took her loan while she was in the middle of her application. All she had to do was get a note that said they were going to do it. It hadn't even been done yet. And they went ahead forward with her home loan. 
And, and I've read one about nurses, as long as you're in a, you're practicing in a, touching patients, you know, how much, then you can also have forgiveness. So my wife's out because she doesn't touch patients anymore. So Oh, darn. Yeah. Does she still have student loan? Masters. Oh, yeah. I still have my daughter's loan. So I'm working on that still. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it got large. Yeah, well, that's too bad. No, it's okay. I, I'm happy because she's doing a lot of good work for people, and I, I um, – promised her and I appreciate the fact that I can do that. Now, also remember, you know, with any any loan forgiveness program, you know, like they did when they did credit cards and they actually did your mortgages a few years ago. Yes. You might have debt, you might have income that might be considered income. Oh, that's you know, another so thing to look at. So you should really check with your tax advisor to make sure that's not going to mm -hmm. come back and bite you later. Mm -hmm. that, you know that. So check before you do anything, please. But in a lot of these uh, student loan payments we were seeing, they they look like the size of a of a car loan. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so don't go out and buy a car first. Uh, get your home first. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, because I mean, like I, we talked about this a while back. I had a lady who helped buy a car for her boyfriend, and and both cars together were the price of a, a mortgage. So, um, what is your idea about retiring the student loan debt faster? What do you think is the best thing to do besides? An equity loan on a house. Well, you, you know, it depends. Every situation is different. I mean, what do we go through? I mean, we just went through the Great Recession, so I'm sure in the last 10 years, nobody's really worked on getting rid of their student loan debt, you know, paying it down because they didn't have extra money. But So now it's a reset, right? Because correct. it's time. And then know? I also heard there's programs, if you've had them for 25 years, you can get rid of them. The, all this stuff is, you know, I would search online, find it. and. Yeah, I heard if you paid on time for 10 years in a row, you can get some things. Reset. You know, I heard that too, but then I heard that that didn't really come into play, so... Mm -hmm. So I would just check. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. So um, it's important to go to school and get your degree so you can buy a house. Yes, a, we really, like that. a really nice house. And then, but just don't buy a car first. Yeah. Just, just let, be careful. Don't be using all your money for, you know, living expenses. Right. Right. Because we still have tons of programs to help first time buyers that don't have the down payment, but they make a certain amount of money in certain areas. So we're doing a lot of those. This right. Past and also, week, right? if you're, you know, if you're going, if your kid's going to go to school, um, you could actually buy a house for them to live in down the road to go to school. You know, if they had a little job, you, the parents could actually help them through a FHA purchase that property. They live in there, and then so that where the parents co-sign and they're yeah. even actual non-occupying co-borrowers, correct? Oh, talk about that program. I just did. I know, but tell more. There's basically, if you want, if you know, if your kid's going to go to school, as I said before, you could actually purchase the house there for only three and a half percent down FHA with the, your child on the loan with that. And so he lives in the property, and then he can have renters to help offset the. Um, yeah, that's the mortgage. not my problem. That's yes, they can do whatever. No, they, they can want rent after. a room, yeah, couldn't they? They could. Yeah, and so then. But that's not how we're getting them to qualify. We're just working off the parents and the and the child. No, but what a great program, huh? It could be. I've heard about that. I've just never done one of Most, those. A lot of people, you know, didn't think about it. And then they start, you know, I've heard a few of my friends who actually did when their kids went to school, they actually bought a house. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was cheaper than room and board at the college. Really? Yep. Okay. Well, I think that's amazing. So if anybody wants to buy their kid a house so they can go to school and get the higher education and move out for sure, um, call Ed. He'll get you approved with 3.5% down and we'll get you going. Sounds good. And you can do that with a JC as well as a four-year college, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. It doesn't matter. So you're, it's, it's, you could actually help your kid buy a house even if they weren't going to school as a non-occupying co-borrower. You would just you your child would you know be on the loan and you would be the income for the loan, but not the credit for the loan. Because we were talking about before, you can fix a lot of things with having a non-occupying co-borrower on the loan with you. That's somebody who's not living in the house. The one thing they can't fix is credit. It always goes off the lowest person's credit. Period. All right. right. Income they can fix, equity they can fix, but not credit. So if they don't have credit and they don't have enough income, the parent can come in and be an unoccupying co-borrower and approve? The second part, yes. The first part, no. Okay. Talk so to the me. kid has to have a credit score, period. Okay. Or or it just has an established credit. We could probably do a manual underwrite. But most of the time, most kids have had a credit card. I know we got our child each one a credit card before they were, you know, right around Do they 18. just need one or two? Yeah, they don't need – there's no number of trade lines you have to have these days under FHA. So just one trade line. You can get them a um, a credit card where they go ahead and put money in a savings account and they you issue could, them a credit card. Correct. You could do a secure credit card, yes. This is 500 bucks down and have a secure credit card. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds exciting. Is it? You ready? Yeah, I'm ready to call people and say, let's get your kid out of the house. <laughs> yeah. Let's do the failure to, let's fix all the failure to launches. I have one. 
You do? Yeah. I'm like, should I call should I call your wife? Yeah, you should. Tell her how to do it. No. <laughs> we just don't know where she's going to school. Then we'll figure that out after oh. she's done with what she's doing. So. To get her higher education, get yeah. student loans. But you're in the military. Does she get to get her, her uh, That's the other thing is if you're in the military and you're a disabled vet, at least 10% up to 99. So if you're 10% to 99% disabled uh, in California through the Cal Vet program, you're able to have your kids go to school for free with any of the universities, the junior colleges, community colleges, um, any of the you know state colleges. Basically, you the tuition is covered. You, they have to pay for the books and room and board, of course. But you're, the only stipulation, if you're not 100% disabled, is your kid has to um, can't make more than 12500 a year. So basically, your kid can't make anything. Make $1,000 a month, and that's it. So if anybody's out there um, with a child that um, they are military, call Ed. He'll tell you the program. And, and there's also there other – and a lot of the people have gone out of the service in the last 10 years or five years. They have a great GI Bill that helps their kids anyway. These are people who have been not in the last 10 years or oh, since 9-11, older. older, that didn't really have a great GI Bill to pass on to their children. You you can in California. we got about a few seconds left. We do? Yeah. Two, okay. two minutes? All right, we got two minutes. Okay, so I wanted to expound on that because um, does that also go for uh, how about other service people like police officers, uh, firemen? Do they have their own program or do they fall under that same? I don't know what they have. Yeah, we yeah. should find out and put that on the air because as well. I, I don't think they really. You know, you're talking about a program for them to help them buy. To help them buy or help them with their children or whatever. Well, I think there's a program out there for them to help them buy that basically the agent help, kicks in some money, the loan the loan person kicks in some money, and then you could help them get into a, if it's in a, a unique area, you know. As, uh, I think we should check. We, we've got the guys that come on the air before us that are police officers. We should probably ask them because they're involved in service too, and there's a sacrifice in service. Right. So if there's something special, let's, um, let's highlight. Let's it. find out and then let them know. Okay. So we're we going to take them out? Okay. No, we got one more minute. So oh, you we gotta, do? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> don't be trying to get out of here so soon today. <laughs> just don't want to you got to go back down to L.A. or something? No. I have so much stuff on my desk to get back to, but it's okay. I, I love doing this, and it goes fast. So the biggest thing that I think about with um, the student loans is that um, we can take it from being burdensome to something that can be a positive situation. I think if they would sit down with you and let you do their budget and and schedule them through, then they can see how soon they can get into home ownership, right? Yeah, I think it's very really important to do a budget to see where you're at and where you should be going so you know exactly how much to afford. So if there's anybody out there with that kind of consideration, just give us a call and I would be happy to sit down with you. I've got a beautiful office for that to happen in and um, I can set it up for you. Just hit pound 250 and we would love to help you. Uh, uh, wade through the maze of all of that so that you can see your way through to home ownership. So, you want to take us out? Sure, let's do that. Let's pay some bills. So, um, thank you for listening to Real Estate Jerky, where tough meets tender in the real estate industry. And we'll be right back after this break. And every week I read a whole long situation about how you can reach us. But it's so easy. Just uh, Google us and you'll see we're everywhere. And you can listen anytime. You'll always learn something when you listen. See you when we get back. All right. All right, so enough about student loans. What else was I about? They're talking about we're going to have an early spring, like I talked about earlier today. You know, that uh, with the rates, we're gonna, everybody's going to start buying early. Yeah, they shouldn't wait to spring. They should go now. Yeah, because then they're going to I keep getting a blind spot where I'm completely blind and I can't see anything. Why? I don't know. It's so weird. And I think it's, I don't know. Stress? Probably, I don't know. Why don't you go run around the, the building room? I know, huh? Do some push-ups. So I'll be Once you do 22 for the 22 vets who died each day of suicide. 22 push ups? That's, that that was a challenge. It's actually down to 20, but everybody's keeping the 22. So, do you do 20 a day push ups? No. no, I do other exercise at the gym. I'm going to start that. 22. I have 12 minutes worth of stuff, so I have to figure something out. Yeah, we do. Well, we didn't have 11, 12 minutes before. We're going to have 11 minutes. Okay, so we're a little bit over, so this next segment we'll do about 10 minutes. We'll See, you only got 10 minutes. Okay, it did go fast today, though. Well, it's because we're, we're only doing the bare minimum. Who's next week? Uh, we'll look at the thing. Oh, Dave and Horn. Yay. <laughs> That'll be fun. Appraisals. What? It's appraisals. Hey, we're starting. We are? Yes. 
We got two minutes after oh we start. God, what do we get so at nine minutes, I'm, we're gonna, I'm gonna say that's wrap, wrapping it up. Okay. All right, let's talk about other stuff. What do you want to talk right. about, Aaron? Okay, let me just look really fast. I know what I want. I want to talk about rates. Of course you Always with my best. But truth be told, someday I want to go to the wild, wild west. Leaving the bull behind, it's real estate jerky. Hey, it's this is Ed Parco. We're back again. I'm here with my co-host Aaron Custer, and glad to be back for our final segment of the show. And we're talking about higher education debt and home ownership show. I guess I said show twice. You did. Oh well, I guess it's a great show. Well, you know what I was thinking about? I was thinking about how uh, what does it cost to get into a home right now? And we have talked about it in our last shows. But I was thinking in their bank account, if they could just put away two thousand dollars and just stick it in their savings account and give us a call. We pretty much can cover all the rest of it if they're within their um, their um, income, right? Well, it depends on what they're looking to purchase too. You know, if they're looking to purchase a four hundred thousand dollars house, that's not you know as much going to be harder than that. But I guess I'm mostly talking to first time home buyers, where normally that isn't their reach. <laughs> normally they're between two. Are and you schooling me right now, Aaron? No, I'm just saying that's what I was talking about, not schooling you. Yeah. But I was thinking how easy that is to just sock away two thousand dollars and be able to be a homeowner and have some independence. I think one of the problems is I don't think people are safe like they should. You know, they don't put money away like they used to. But don't you think it's I never did, so I can't say like they used to. But. No, but don't you think it's because they think that they'll always just go earn it and they just want to have fun and they don't have a goal set of what they want to accomplish? Because when you want something, you set up a way to get there. Don't you think? Yeah, I just think people are used to just getting it without really working hard at it. Sometimes. Do you think? I don't know. Could be. Well, most of the time when I'm dealing with a first-time buyer, they just didn't know if they could do it. They just didn't know they get to do it, and they don't know how to do it. So what would you suggest when you're talking to somebody that has not ever owned a home before, and uh, they are full of, chock full of student debt and all that? What would you think is their first move? The first move is to sit down with one of us. And don't go buy a stereo system, right? No. You can sit down with us and find out what you can do. Let's put a budget together so you, if you can't do it today, so you can do it in six months from now or a year from now. But you can be on your on the plan forward to be able to purchase a home, right? Yeah. And if there's something else in your horizon, too, it doesn't have to be either or. It can be either and. Like, there's this thing you want to do plus buy a home. Well, then we schedule that out and we show how you can attain both of those things. Right? And if you can't do it today at the job you're at, then plan to find a different job you know what i mean get look at a different job that was going to get you where you want to be don't stay where you're at just because it's comfortable people don't like change well and uh, but there's something else too because before it was so hard to get a job maybe people are still stuck there because now there's so many jobs you can you know we don't have enough people to fill up all the jobs so maybe they can get back to maybe what their dream is and have a job that's exciting to them so basically there's too many choices they can't choose which job they want no, i'm just saying stuck. maybe they're stuck somewhere because they couldn't get it before i understand what you're saying right yeah. so let's make some changes let's go yeah. for living a great life especially well, in this valley well it's and it's again it's about planning your future mm -hmm. where do you want to be you're here now where do you want to go right right don't don't every year you look in january what's your plan for the rest of the year or yeah. december i should say why aren't we doing that for yourself personally well what i'm also hearing is that you know you're supposed to start setting up your goals for the next year in the like november area getting ready right. but then relook at them again in february after all the holidays after all the stuff after you're getting into your swing for the new year then you're supposed to reset your goals again in february and make sure that you're making the adjustments that you need for the year so that you can have your year right. that you well, planned on right and it's the difference of planning on sunday what your monday is going to be like versus planning monday morning what your monday is going to be like right i know there are so many positive things that can be done and sometimes i get i go why am i not doing that it's because i'm doing all these other things and it's just about time management and actually being specific about what you're caring about so i really think that um even if you never thought that you could own a home if you just sat down and looked at the plan that would take you to get there it would change a lot of people's minds about home ownership don't you think i think so very much so and you know depending on you know, where you're at and where you're living i mean if you think that's moving out of the state of california would be better for you to buy a house somewhere else then do that if that's your plan if it's not stay in california find the house you want and it's it's get you a different job well and not only that um we're we're connected all over the united states and we're networked we can hand you off to somebody that will help you achieve your dream in another state and another um, area and then we're doing that a lot i do that a lot i help people a lot and so don't you and i've had places where you've pre-approved somebody and then we 
we hand off the loan so somebody else can get started with a full package. And that's fine too if it's out of state. You know, whatever it is to help you achieve your goal in having home ownership and wealth. Don't right. you think? I think so. Yeah. So I'm excited. Have you ever gone to Reno? Not, not in a while. I mean, to look at the properties up there and to see that area? No. Have you ever thought of living somewhere else that, other than California? Uh, I lived in Colorado when I was a kid, so. Did you like that? It's okay. It's a little dry. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people, we live here for the weather, right? And then we put up with the high taxes and all that. But still one of the greatest places to live, isn't it? Yeah. So you're saying we got high taxes in California? So just saying, did I say that out yes, loud? On the, that on I'm the sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, they are higher statistically, and I wasn't complaining. Well, there's five states that are complaining right now as they're filing their taxes. Uh, so let's talk about housing and purchasing. And I think I brought it up earlier in the show about how they're thinking the spring's going to be a really crazy time. Uh, people instead it's of the summer. Started. It's, it's so if you're thinking about buying a home, don't wait to sit down with somebody. Sit down with them now so that you can not be in that competitive bidding war. Because I still see that we're going to have a very shortage of supply of homes. Yeah, and I'm still seeing people. Um, I'm putting in offers and there's five different offers right, right now already. It's right. pretty fast. But you know what? Well, I just keep offering until somebody says yes. I don't care. Right. But I mean, if you look at what you talked about, how many homes are on the market, right? You said 800, 800 and something. Yeah. Between the two counties, about 2,000 well, residential yeah. um, properties. And that includes everything. Condos, right. townhomes. Places um, you don't want to live at. You never know. You know, it's funny because I was showing a home. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying there might there's a whole bunch of places you don't want to live at. There's a certain only section that you want to live at. Yeah, but you know what? It's so funny because I, I was showing a home in um, French Camp, and I don't know why I was drawn to it. I just could see all this potential. I kept showing all my first-time buyers, and everybody was looking at me like I was crazy. Somebody, their eyes just lit up, and they purchased it, and, and they turned it into this gorgeous it was like an old farmhouse. And so right. it's I don't more know. of a country area, right? In French camp. It uh, seems, yeah. but I think it's right on the five corridor and it's, it's easy access to get to the Bay area. And so, um, it turned out to be a really, really good purchase for them. Right. So I try to and, keep my mind open to all the different areas. And that's why I tell you, know, a lot of people, you don't, you know, if you're going to buy on the, in Patterson, if you want on the five corridor, buy somewhere else, you know I mean? Where are you planning to go with your life? Like you can't just purchase if you don't know where you're going. Right. Right. I mean, you could, but then is that the, really the right house for you, the right area? Sometimes the first-time buyers, they just want to purchase close to where they work right now and get started. Do you find that to be true? I think so. Yeah. I yeah. Think so. And then you sit down and you're paying your own mortgage instead of somebody else's. Yeah. And then you're looking about what you want to do in the horizon. Yeah. Because the one thing about home ownership is even though, you know, still rents are going up faster than the pr purchase prices are. You know, I mean, still. And so they you are. have no control over what your rent's going to be. I heard somebody the other day saying that the people had to get out of the place they were living in because the rent went up $400. I have I have properties that are rentals, not my personal, but that I'm representing, and they are raising them $400. Right. So basically, if you don't own your own house, then you have, you're subject to that. Right. And so why not pay your own mortgage? Right. Sure. I mean, because we had some people who are purchasing and they're renting pretty much what they're purchasing for. I mean, the rents right now are 2000 a month for an apartment with some kids and it's not luxury apartments. They just call it that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, ridiculous. Yeah. So I think it's important for people to just uh, hit pound 250, say real estate jerky, give us a call. We'll sit down with you. We'll get you on a plan. Or you can call us direct. You can give them your cell number so they can call you direct. It's uh, 209. You heard it ring before. Yeah. 382142. And that's your fault, by the way. Yeah, my office is 209-846-9270. Just give us a call and we'll help you out. We have about a minute and a half left, Aaron. What do you want to talk about for 30 seconds so we can start saying all of our goodbyes? I, um, I'm really thrilled about having seven grandchildren. Well, I'm glad you're thrilled about that. Yeah. Because that way they can all give you a bunch of gifts. Is that why it is? No, I don't know. It just feels like your legacy or something goes on. Makes me want to work harder so I can leave them a lot. <laughs> right? Don't you want to do that? What? Leave a legacy. I don't know. I, yep. I just want to be good. And I, I could find it through homeownership, though. There you I go. I love that. How about you? Yeah. I want to help as many families as I can. Before I'm gone. Me too. And I'm going to do 20 push-ups a day. Are you? Yes. Okay. That sounds great. All right. You can say why. 
Sorry, why? Why do you want to do 20 pictures per it's day? Your, it was your suggestion. Tell them why. All right, so we got about 30 seconds, if I remember right. Right, we're good. All right, so basically there there was a challenge a while back about doing 22 push-ups a day for veterans who commit suicide. It was number, it was about 22 a day. And so people were doing challenges. That's the whole thing about her 22. But you said it dropped to 20. It dropped to 20, that is correct. That's good. Hey, we're here at the end of our show. Pretty sure we gave you plenty to chew on today. Um, if you know anybody... If you know and love a family member or a friend with a student loan debt who are holding off purchasing a home, have them get in touch with us. Again, they can call me direct at 209-846-9270. Next week's show is going to be about manufacturing homes. Are they difficult to buy? How do they work? Should they be on permanent foundation, not permanent foundation? What are the advantages, disadvantages? Remember, when you call, you can listen. Also, if you don't call in, you can listen to our podcast anytime, 24-7. And that's on iHeartMedia. That's on Apple Podcast. That's on Google Play, Hisher, anything there, Spotify, all of them out there. So you want to say goodbye, Aaron? Yes. Um, I hope you have a great week. Um, let's sit down and help you set up a budget and help you buy a house. All right. That's it. You want to give your number last time? 209-380-2142. Are we good? We're good. All right. We'll I'll talk to you guys next week. week.